Silk. The name says it all. Silk is an embodiment of sheen, splendor and luster. Whether religious festivals or wedding ceremonies, silk bestows an aura of sacredness to the occasion. Its majestic looks lend grace to its users and cast a magic spell on those who are a witness to its brilliance. Indians love their customs and traditions. The use of silk garments during festivities and good times is a norm and is carried out with much fanfare and style. Both old and young take immense pride in the grace of silken threads. The different hues and colorful dyes add to the beauty of this magic yarn. But how many of us know the ugly truth of this beautiful yarn? We kill about 50,000 little creatures called silkworms to produce just one sari. Every day, millions of such creatures are subjected to violent death in order to produce silk for our garments. For us Indians, it is an uneasy compromise. In the land of the Mahatma, the silent screams of such innocent creatures are hard to ignore. Some crusaders of non-violence started looking for clean alternatives. One such Ahimsavadi in the state of Andhra Pradesh, Sri Kusuma Rajaya at last came out with a fine solution with an undercurrent of peace. He came up with an escape route for both the silkworm as well as the silk users. The worms now fly to live a life of newfound freedom and the lovers of silk can still wear their lustrous clothes guilt-free. Before we talk of this peace-loving man and his mission, let us look at the process of extracting silk. It is said that silk was discovered about 5,000 years ago and legend has it that it happened in a garden in China that while the princess was sipping her tea, when she plucked a cocoon from a mulberry tree, it somehow accidentally fell into her cup of tea. The princess was dazzled by the beauty of the spectacle in her teacup as strong white threads started unraveling. That little storm in her teacup went on to create big ripples all over the world as time passed by. There are several stages in the production of silk. It is actually the fiber which certain insects produce to build their cocoons and webs. In fact, many insects produce silk, but it is the filament produced by the mulberry silk moth called Bombex mori, which is used by the commercial silk industry to produce the yarn. Silk filament comes from the cocoons built by the silkworms, which are not worms in a real sense, but only silk moth pupae. The art and science of cultivating silkworms is called sericulture. 
a field which offers employment and livelihood to lakhs of people in the country. Let's see how it works. First, the tiny eggs of the silkworm moths are incubated until they hatch into worms. Then, they are placed under a fine layer of gauze covered with finely chopped mulberry leaves. For six weeks, the caterpillars or the silkworms eat almost continually and voraciously. and increase in size tremendously. These worms are then made to build their cocoons and they do it as one continuous length of silk filament. The worms have two large glands in them which secrete a liquid from a single exit tube in the head called spinneret. This liquid secretion from two glands harden on exposure to air and form twin filaments composed of fibroin which is a protein material. A second pair of glands secretes a gummy binding fluid called sericin which fuses the two filaments together. Do you want to know what it is that gives silk its sheen? It is the triangular shape of the filament and the light reflecting off those surfaces. Over a period of three days, the silkworm spins its cocoon producing up to 950 meters of silk filament. Supposing the moth were allowed to hatch, the silk strands would be broken and no silk would be obtained. Now comes the sad part of our story. So, to preserve the silk strands, the pupae inside the cocoon are killed well before they hatch. Hot air or steam is used for this gruesome act. The silk is then unbound from the cocoon by softening the sericin and then delicately and carefully unwinding or reeling the filaments from the cocoons.
How do you differentiate between raw and soft silk? Raw silk is the one which still contains sericin. Once sericin is washed out in soap and boiling water, the fabric is left soft and lustrous and this becomes 30% lighter too. Then, the strands are wound together in a process known as throwing to create a silk yarn. Depending upon the number of standards and twists, the weight and texture of the silk yarn is determined. Understanding silk would be incomplete without knowing Dernier and Hank. The thickness of silk filament is expressed in terms of Dernier. The number of grams of weight per 9000 meters of filament and spun silk is given a numerical designation based on the number of hanks that is 840 yards length per pound of yarn. Another characteristic feature of silk is its superior strength. It is amazing to note that silk filament is as strong as steel of the same thickness. It is much stronger than cotton and wool. And since silk is also lower in density than cotton, wool or nylon, it is highly moisture absorbent. Now, let us look at the process of making Ahimsa silk and also get to know the man behind this clean technology. First, about the Crusader. Necessity is the mother of invention. Such a moment came across Rajaya's life. In 90s, I come across Madam Janaki Venkataraman, the Vidyan President's wife, and she wanted to buy some saris from APCO. We have taken all type of saris from our APCO and she has chosen some saris and posed a question whether you have a sari woven without killing the silk worm. This question itched me and I moved to explore how, how to do this. Rajaya resolved to find suitable alternatives and strove hard to look for a non-violent method of producing silk. Meet Sri Kusuma Rajaya of Warangal, Andhra Pradesh. Born into a family of weavers, Rajaya pursued the dream of being an expert in weaving technology and went to Salem, Tamil Nadu, to complete his diploma in handloom technology. He later joined the AP State Handloom Weavers Cooperative Society as a technical officer and offered guidance to weavers in weaving new designs and quality control procedures. Since I am the handloomist, I know how the silk is made and how the other fabrics are, other fibers are made. Then I attempted the Ahimsa silk, Ahimsa way and I selected some cocoons after piercing the cocoons. I made sample production of two saris in 1991-92. The entrepreneur Rajaya became a crusader for non-violent technology and projected his idea in 2006. Today, Rajaya is a beacon of hope to many small and medium class weavers who aspire to market Ahimsa fabrics among the niche clientele in different parts of the world. Today, though gradually, Rajaya's dream is being realized as scores of celebrity business magnates, politicians and stars have made Ahimsa Silk 
their fashion statement. Now, let's take a look at the process of extracting silk the Ahimsa way. The Ahimsa method in the silk production process itself was the innovation. His approach was novel, fresh and unexpected. The idea of putting an end to the violent death of the silkworms was the aha experience for Rajaya. The silken touch of Rajaya defined peace in a new context and altered the meaning of life itself. Putting the cocoon in hot water was a strict no-no for him. He patented the technology of spinning the yarn by allowing the insects to escape at the most appropriate time and then use the quality produce. In the conventional method, 1500 meters of filament could be extracted from one cocoon and over 95% of the yarn could be used. Whereas in the Ahimsa process, the yield was only 15%. It was a huge compromise. Rajaya had to withdraw from reeling as well as hand spinning. Instead, he did it mechanically to produce finer threads and quality garments. Though this process was costly and labor intensive, it was very satisfying and filled him with a sense of freedom and peace. Rajaya has successfully created about 30 designs including Kanchipura, Kalakshetra, Ikkat, Jamdani and Kalamkari printed saris. He has also used Ahimsa silk to create Dharmavaram, Gadwal and Venkatagiri saris. Other materials like Salwar, Kameez, Stoles and Dhotis were also created with Ahimsa silk. Since Ahimsa silk enjoys two distinct advantages, that is, they don't wrinkle easily and secondly, they are more air permeable. These fabrics have attracted the attention of the couture conscious both in India and abroad. A way has been shown and a humane and compassionate alternative has been developed. It is time we all started respecting the spirit of Ahimsa. Let us join the crusade of this bold entrepreneur and declare to the world that we value life. We are not human beings on a spiritual journey. We are spiritual beings on a human journey.